Welcome back to Everard Junction. In this video I'm going to turn my attention to a rolling stock project that I've had on the go for a little while and that concerns these five Helian dogfish wagons in front of the camera. As mentioned in previous videos I purchased five of these quite nice little wagons from eBay second hand back in the summer and I managed to get them for quite a good price. They typically are quite expensive as Helian haven't made another production run of these for a very long time now so they can command silly money but I found five of these for sale second hand with a previous weathered finish that certainly contributed to their cheap price. Over the course of this video you'll see how the wagons started out and how we arrive at this point here where they look quite convincing and are ready for service on the layout. As you can see on this wagon, the weathering is a bit of a mess and uh, not uh, to you know, criticise the previous owner of these wagons or anything like that. This, this all happens to all of us, including myself. You've got to start somewhere when it comes to weathering and there's certainly many attempts from myself that I would consider quite poor and I ended up redoing those a couple of years ago. So I'm going to show you how to strip all of the paint off of this wagon but leave behind the factory finish which will just make things a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. We're probably going to lose the transfers so all of the uh, sort of printed information on the side of the wagon is likely to go away but the yellow, the black on the bottom and the sort of grey uh, wagon body um, should be preserved and then we can simply give it a fresh set of transfers and redo the weathering. So to do this I'm going to be using a all-purpose cleaner called LA's Totally Awesome. This isn't particularly easy to get hold of in the UK but a couple of years ago when I looked into this I found a UK seller on eBay that had UK stock of it. I've still got most of it left, obviously you lose a little bit with evaporation and spillage over the course of weathering and redoing bits and pieces but uh, I still have a jar containing the majority that I bought originally. I've had good luck with removing mostly rail match paint but it also works well on Vallejo, various other acrylic paints, oil paints and uh, well anything really that I've dunked it in. It's always managed to get off whatever finish has been applied over the top of the factory paint. However it's not aggressive enough to attack the paintwork applied at the factory by Hornby or Backman or Helian or Daypol or any of the major manufacturers. I've not had it strip paint off any of those locos. The worst it does is remove transfers and lining and things like that. So as an example if I was to dunk this Backman class 37 into the solution then it would remove the 37104 number and the orange cant rail stripe with the rest of the paintwork staying intact. So although you then have to get the transfers out and do a little bit of work it's certainly a lot better than stripping it back to completely bare plastic and having to repaint an entire model. Now of course that's just the research I've done so if anybody in the comments has got other chemicals that work equally as well that perhaps might be a little bit easier to get hold of in the UK please feel free to post your suggestions down below. Stripping paint off models is not something that I do it's something that's done throughout the hobby and I'm sure there's lots of people out there with their various little secrets and potions to getting this job done. This is just the product that I decide to use but it does not mean that it's the only product out there that does the job. Here's the jar I use for the uh, body shell stripping. As you can see, it's about the right size or height to fit a coach or a body shell from a locomotive into the solution. And it's got one of those rubber lids, so it stops uh, any evaporation occurring. Obviously, I lose some over each job, you know, rinsing it off and stuff like that. But uh, generally speaking, I've had quite good luck with just keeping this stuff to one side in a glass jar. And uh, every now and again, I get it out and uh, strip some more paint off various models. Another reason for using the LA's Totally Awesome is it is just a general purpose cleaner. So it is water soluble, it doesn't harm your skin, it doesn't smell horrible or anything like that. It's not a nasty noxious chemical, say like having a uh, big jar of isopropyl alcohol for example. It's uh, much uh, nicer to the nose and the eyes with that respect and you don't have to worry about a spillage as much as you would with say paint stripper or isopropyl alcohol. Just uh, open the lid and then place the model inside. I'll leave that for about 20 minutes, get it out of the solution, have a look and see how it's doing. Hopefully some of that paint will start to lift and we can agitate that with a brush and then leave it back in the jar for a few more minutes if it needs a little bit more of a soak. I've left the model in there for at least half an hour. It's probably been longer. I'm not too bothered about uh, any damage to the livery, but uh, I expect the weathering will have come off and that'll be about it. 
zoom in on that you can see basically what's happened is the paint has now lifted and with a bit of agitation you can see how it's coming off and it's exposing the livery underneath so I'll continue working away on it and uh, re-dip it a few times if it needs it As you can see in this particular case the transfers pretty much stayed intact and stayed behind. Sometimes you'll get lucky and all the transfers will survive on a model and other times they'll just fall straight off. It just depends. It's a bit of luck of the draw. Sometimes uh, being careful with the amount of time you immerse the model in the cleaning solution will affect this as well um, but it's a difficult one to sort of strike the balance between removing as much of the old paint as possible the only thing that didn't shift is this sort of orangey brown paint on the wheels so what i've done is remove the wheels and once again use the fiberglass pencil to remove the paint you can see that on the wheel on the left so if we take a look at this copy of motive power monthly from june 1990 we can see we've got some dogfish wagons in the back of this image here so we can have a look at what the weathering should be like. So we can see here in this photo from Brian Morrison that we've got a selection of dogfish wagons in the background behind this class 50 and you can see most of them are actually quite filthy and finished in the olive colour of the departmental livery which by this point in time had weathered to sort of an orange rust colour but you can see we've got a, a Dutch version dish there and uh, you can see it's quite clean. You can see all of the data panels on the side of it are present. You can see the different colours. Obviously it's a black and white image but you can still get an idea for the condition that the wagon is in. The handbrake wheel is still white and you can see some of the builders plates and information along the sole bar. So it's not very dirty and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to take the weathering off this particular wagon. You can see further back there's two more in the Dutch livery and they're rather pronounced and stand out showing the fact that they're relatively clean compared to the other ones. So I've continued to chip off bits and pieces of the weathering and they're certainly looking a lot better. Something I'm doing now is removing most of the transfers. I'm doing this for two reasons. Number one, I have a nice set of transfers for dogfish wagons so I can give all these unique numbers. And secondly, the uh, transfers Got a little bit damaged in the process of the uh, weathering uh, stripped down. Uh, some of the transfers had little bits and pieces of them missing and some of that nasty brown paint that was on the model previously had sort of got into the transfers and uh, was proving a bit difficult to shift. So I've decided just to get rid of them and I'll reapply them with uh, a new set from Railtech. Removing transfers on models tends to vary on the particular model that you have but in this case I'm just using a little bit of enamel thinners and a cotton bud and you can see we've got the remnants here of this uh, data panel and I'm just literally going over the surface of the model and with a bit of time and a bit of patience the rest of this transfer will come off and most of the paintwork underneath it will have stayed behind. There we go the transfers are now removed the warning flashes in the corners they look okay so I'll be leaving those. Looking over the sole bar and the axle boxes and springs and steps and stuff, there is still a few little bits of that old paint lurking behind. As this is a wagon and uh, it's going to be weathered again anyway and these things got beaten about a little bit, what I'm going to do is take some matte black paint and I'm just going to go over the sole bar and the sort of treads, treadways and bits and pieces, anything that should be black, and just touch that back in. Here's an example I did previously and you can see how it smartens things up and just gets rid of any traces of that previous weathering attempt. To tidy up the sole bar and underframe of the wagon I've just used a little bit of Vallejo black and as you can see that's done a nice job of just getting rid of those last few bits of the old weathering. Okay it's getting better, uh, smartened it up a little bit. Next thing to do is to 
paint the inside of the wagon. You can see I got rid of most of the sort of brick coloured uh, reddish paint out from the inside. Not not a horrendous colour to be honest um, in terms of painting the inside of the wagon, uh, but it was only painted in a few small spots. On this one I did earlier, you can see I've sort of got a mix of oil paint and a few different shades and things in there, but generally it's a sort of muddy sort of brown colour as the inside of the wagon always uh, tends to end up with bare metal showing uh, due to the constant unloading and loading of you know sharp stones and obviously over time those bare metal surfaces go rusty. So looking at various pictures there seems to be a sort of brown reddish rust sort of colour on the insides of these things. So to paint the insides I'm going to go for this Vallejo beige brown and that will give us a sort of base colour and then I'll look at further pictures and look at what other colours we can perhaps add over the top of that just to make things look a little bit more varied. While the inside of that wagon is drying, I will just give the outside of it a quick blast of gloss varnish, just one quick coat from the airbrush, and that's just so it makes the uh, transfers look a bit better when they've been applied. Normally for something like that, I'd quickly chuck it in the spray booth just to get rid of the fumes and stuff, but it literally was just you know, like a five second pass with the airbrush and this is going straight in a cupboard with a sealed door to dry over the next couple of hours and then I'll get it back out again later and finish it off. After leaving the transfers for several hours to dry, I went over the model again with the airbrush with a coat of matte varnish. I use several different varnishes on the layout. I usually use the rail match stuff, but lately I've been experimenting with the Vallejo and the VMS water-based varnishes, and they seem to work quite well. With the transfers now dry, I'm going to do just a little bit more airbrushing to the inside of the wagon. I'm quite pleased with the finish that we've got at the moment. It looks fine, and I've used the uh, Vallejo beige brown to achieve that. What I've done now is apply a drop of white to the mix, just Vallejo white, and that's lightened the colour very slightly and I'm just going to spray some of that towards the well of the wagon, towards the sort of bottom centre of the wagon to give an effect of the sort of dust from the uh, stones. Looking at various pictures it seems that there's sort of two sort of colours inside these things. There's a sort of lighter dustier colour towards the bottom in the shape of the sort of ballast that would be filling it and then around the edges where those rocks are not present it's more of this sort of rusty colour. So there we have it, the weathering removed, the bottom of the wagon tidied up a little bit with a bit of black paint, some additional weathering here and there but not a massive amount to reflect the wagon's relatively new condition after its repaint in the 1980s and of course some replacement transfers applied. Some additional weathering and painting inside camera doesn't pick this up terribly well but there are a few different colours inside the wagons and it just gives a sort of rusty and uh, abrased appearance from all the stones being poured into the top and drained out of the bottom. I've kept a few of these in the original Dutch engineer's livery as uh, it's one of my favourites. Two of the wagons I've backdated and painted them into the very sort of rusty decrepit sort of shade that many of them were in during the mid to late 1980s. As you can see these are quite rusty in their appearance and have numerous patches painted onto the body of the wagon, again using pictures as reference. So that completes this little project. As you can see it's quite possible to remove previous weathered finishes from models while still preserving the factory paintwork underneath. In the case of two of these models I've done a bit of a repaint on them but uh, for the others I've left them in their original Dutch livery and uh, I now have five dogfish wagons that look at home on the layout. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll leave you with a couple of running shots of these mixed in with various other wagon types.